Hello, rodeo fans, and welcome to episode eight of the Short Round, the official podcast of the Canadian Professional Rodeo Association. I'm your host, Wacey Anderson, and we have an awesome show lined up for this week. And I am pleased to welcome my guest co-host, Clay Creasy. Clay is a former saddle bronc rider who now writes for the Canadian Rodeo News and volunteers his time on the Cadogan Rodeo Committee. So he stays quite involved post-career. Welcome to the show, Clay. Thanks for joining me, man. You bet. Thanks for having me on today. That's nice. It's nice having uh, someone to kind of have some banter back and forth with than usually doing it on my own. So I really appreciate you taking the time. And and it's it's awesome having somebody like you, like I said, you, you're writing for the Canadian Rodeo News and you kind of have keep a close pulse on what's happening in the rodeo world. So it's nice to be able to bounce some stuff off with a guy like you. Yeah, no, for sure. Obviously, anymore, the, the Cowboy Channel makes it a lot easier for a person to stay involved mm-hmm. and, and really follow along with things. And and I've just always had a, a huge passion, been a fan since long before I even started entering rodeos. And and so, yeah, getting back involved and and seeing the rodeo news started back up these days and, and being a part of that's been, been pretty cool. So, yeah. So... Before we jump into some of our content here, let's, let's talk a bit about that. I want, I want to know, so where did the passion for the writing come from and, and how how do you keep ideas flowing? And I guess like obviously keeping a close tab on what's happening really helps out. But yeah, where did that passion come from? And and how do you keep the tools sharp as you move through this part of your career, I guess you could call it? Well, I would have to say I'm definitely the, the second best writer in the family. My brother is an English major. He's an English teacher and, and he's, he's written previously for the rodeo news back when mm-hmm. it was in print and, and everything like that. Whereas I was always the the math person and, and did well in English in, in high school and things like that. But uh, I think part of the inspiration came from my own experience with my, my own personal rodeo sponsor. I won the saddle for the high point at gooseberry rodeo when i was uh, was a young guy and uh being kind of the first big saddle i'd ever won i i reached out to the sponsor because I, I really wanted to make sure that i i thanked him for it and, and didn't really know him at the time but uh in getting to know him he ended up becoming a personal sponsor for me throughout all my rodeo years in in the cpra and 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 just became a really good friend and 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 over time when i'd have to send in invoices i would just send him letters just giving him uh, how things were going giving him updates on the the year and and the stretch of rodeos we were doing and and just trying to thank him for what i had done and he uh he had mentioned in reply the one time that uh, he thought i was quite a good writer and and that uh, i should definitely try and pursue that at some point and and from it, some people, that's that's one thing. But uh, the, <laughs> my my personal sponsor's family had actually been the uh, creators of the the Harlequin romance novels, so oh, okay, they had cool. quite the <laughs> uh, quite the literary <laughs> background. So yeah, there was a little wild. bit of weight behind that, and and just kind of always kept that in the back of my mind mm-hmm. and and everything, and 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 kept the odd little journal or scribbles down over the years, but mm-hmm. never put it to use and. Uh, Unfortunately, this past spring, he uh, he had passed away. Mm. So I, I had been it kind of was was serendipitous that uh, we had sent out our Christmas cards and and his had bounced back on me because I would had the address wrong. And and at that point kind of thought, you know, I uh, I knew he wasn't doing well at that point, And I mm-hmm. just made sure that I, I wrote down all that uh, I had appreciated from our years knowing each other and, and everything like that. And wow, that's so cool. And, and, and yeah, so I'd gotten that opportunity and not long after finding out that, yeah, he was, he, he wasn't doing very well. And, uh, and it just happened to be that when the first issue of the rodeo news came out, I, uh, I reached out to Denny, Denny Phipps and I, uh, we rodeoed many years together and, uh, I can say he's he's helped me out and fed me in a hospital bed before, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, we've uh, we've hung out at teacher conventions over the years and, mm-hmm. and things like that. And and knowing he was involved with it, I just reached out to him and he put me in touch with Barb because I I just said, hey, you know, one of my favorite things from the the print version of the rodeo news was always a stock talk growing up and, yeah, and everything yeah. like that so i just said hey do you have anybody that's that's looking at that and and at that point i there was that there was a horse that had been doing really well they'd been winning a lot of rodeos on so i i kind of pitched that as an idea mm-hmm. and even though that one didn't materialize i know my first article was uh 
was about a horse that kind of accidentally ended up in the hands of of Wayne Vold. It was uh, a horse sale that uh, John Duffy had sold a mare to Wayne that I had actually rode a few times back in the amateur days that yeah. uh, just happened to be bred when they sold her. And, and uh, that, that filly ended up being a pretty good horse, that uh, dancing queen that Wayne still oh, has. Yeah. Going. Nice. That's so, a horse. Yeah. So, and, and I, I'd, I'd rodeoed and, and got on a lot of horses at Duffy's over the years. So it was a kind of a, just a cool story that I'd always remembered. And, and so we ran with that one for the first one and, and yeah, just been doing the, the stock of the year and, mm -hmm, and CFR mm -hmm. and NFR, that kind of, those ones yeah. kind of put themselves together, but you still find out really cool stuff from, from talking to the contractors about sure. those. And, uh, and then, yeah, once, once Great Coconut had passed away, I, I, I reached out to just see if, if we did want to do a piece on that and mm -hmm. just, just knowing how, and that one, uh, that one ended up being really cool just in the sense that I, I, I wanted to touch base with some of those bareback riders that were rodeo and then, which was, yeah, yeah. Which was when I was going and, uh, and, and yeah, just catching up with those guys and, and seeing where life is and, and That's everything. Cool, and so it's, it's, it's a neat way to stay, to stay involved. Like I know, Sim, ever since I quit rodeo and like trying to find ways to be a part of it and stay involved has been like such a big thing. And, and whether it be through writing or what we're doing now on the podcast and all the, like I do the work on social media and even just being able to go to places and talk to people, it's such a nice way just to stay connected to something that's like given people like us so much. For sure. I mean, I, uh, I think about the, the Cody Johnson song, dear rodeo. I mean, that, <laughs> yeah, that's that song. It, it hits too hard. Yeah, right? yeah, just thinking sure. about everything in the past and 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 how I mean I I'm I'm a pretty beat up guy just like anybody else that's rode rough stock, but uh, you still yeah. you still have such a, a a passion for it and a, mm -hmm. a fond memory of it that uh, yeah it's it's been really nice and and just and even seeing where people are now whether mm -hmm. they're involved in rodeo or not I, yeah I think. Uh, like Tyler Craft and I rode novice together and 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 rodeo together and stuff and and just seeing where he's at now with mm -hmm. with the Calgary Stampede and 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 kind of neat I uh, I coach his his niece and nephew and oh, fun. everything on our little little kids <laughs> hockey team too so there's there's it's those a small world rodeo too. world no matter what yeah yeah, yeah. so right on well, I'll tell you, we appreciate all the work you do for us here at, at Pro Rodeo and, and your involvement is, is awesome, man. But let's with that, let's jump into some of the action that's been going on. We have some some news to go around and some people to talk about. It's been, we're kind of, I would say, what do you think, like three quarters of the way through the winter run um, in the U.S.? Like the Texas swing is is about to come to an end here in Houston. And um, yeah, yeah. So it was wrapping up over the last couple of weeks. But um, yeah, first thing we want to talk about is, is Logan. Hay. he, he won his first San Antonio rodeo. He's looking to bounce back and, and, and have a big year. I think, I think you kind of see it in his, the way he's riding and, and how hard he's pushing. And, and yeah, let's talk a bit about that, that ride he made on Tokyo bubbles in the short round. Yeah. I thought it was a really good ride by Logan. He, he stayed down there. I, I thought Tokyo bubbles had a little different trip. A lot of the time I, I know when Colby Wanchuk actually won San Antonio two years ago mm -hmm. on Tokyo bubbles, it was one of the first times that that horse had really stuck out in my mind because it was so cool. Went out there mm -hmm. and, and set up like when Tokyo bubbles is really on loves to just set up and those guys really gather him up uh, or her up. She's uh, kind of similar to that black tie horse, the Sankey's yeah. in, in the way, I mean, both Bay horses that just, when a guy really gets a hold of them, they just they just get so flashy and, and they're bailing in the air and, and kicking. But even though Tokyo Bubbles didn't have that day, there's still a lot there because there were some lead changes mm. on the front end and, and still a ton of kick through there. And I mean Logan just did a great job in a in a really tough pool there. Yeah, and he didn't he didn't weaken the whole way through the ride. Like he he kept taking the fight to her and and it obviously paid off for him. So pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I thought it was, and just again, a lot of good rides in that yeah, short round. Yeah, well, and it's cool to see like the Canadian content. I know, like we talk about a lot how strong our pool of saddle bronc riders are in Canada, but I think you're really like we're having a strong start, and I think it's a really good chance that we break the record of, of amount of Canadians in, at the NFR in the saddle bronc riding this year. Just such a strong crop that we have, and, and guys off to a strong start. They're healthy, having a good year. I think that's really going to help 
kind of ensure that we have a strong number of boys down in Vegas this, this December? Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd love to say I could nail down who's going to be the guys that make it. You're, you're almost better to just bet on a number of them yeah, instead yeah, exactly. of the specific ones, because they just, uh, there's so many of those guys that uh, ride so well. And, and then, yeah, you get those young guys that just come out of nowhere. And, and I mean, you look at like Q Taylor last year, I mean, he just, he rides so well and, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. It, a case Thompson from a couple of years ago, kind of looking to bounce back and, and, yeah. and just, yeah, you could get other guys that, uh, yeah. Colby one guys like Colby Wanchuk, like Cole Ashbacker, then boys ride so strong. And you got, I think yeah. it's going to be a huge year for Dawson Dom. Like you really saw some big steps yes. in last year and yeah, he's traveled, got himself around the right guys. And I think, yeah, these, if you think the guys we just mentioned are going to, are going to kind of take that next step and really be pushing for a top 15 spot. Yeah. And, and, you know, Dawson Dom is, is such a, a kind of a, a cool story for me because my, my last two years riding saddle brown courses, I was, I, I went back and rodeoed amateur. Mm-hmm. I just had enough injuries and, and just couldn't quite uh, feel like I wanted to go that hard at the pro rodeos. And, and uh, in 2015, he, he was a calf roper. Oh, wow. He was traveling with bronc riders. Mm-hmm. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't entered in the bronc riding, but he was traveling with them all the time. But, and I mean, he had to look, Yeah, uh, yeah. you don't want to say you could predict it, but you, he was that guy that you mm-hmm. looked at and you're like, you know, you could enter and probably do well. And, <laughs> and, and sure enough, they didn't have enough novice guys in the Lakeland finals. So they got him on a couple of horses before the finals and he went out and beat Dawson Hay. Oh, who wow. was just starting that year too. It was, <laughs> that's a cool uh, story. So it was, it was a neat start to him. I actually, when I run into him at the CFR, I told him, I was like, you know, uh, back a long time ago, I was a guy riding Bronx and you were roping and, and now, uh, you're a significantly better Bronx <laughs> rider than I ever was. And, and now here I am just roping. So <laughs> that's awesome, man. It's, ex- it's an exciting time for sure. And, and we, we actually got, got quite a list of people who are having strong starts to their seasons down in the U S and, and I know one guy you really want to touch on is Sawyer Erickson. Um, he was recently featured in the Canadian Rodeo News uh, via an article written by Dave Paulson. And yeah, he's another guy who's kind of just, I think, scratching the surface of what he can do and what he can be at this level. And, and watching him in Denver was was pretty cool. And and yeah, he's he's got he's got all the fixings to be a good saddlebunk rider. Yeah, no, for sure. And and again, like he's one that uh, really jumped out at me watching the maple leaf circuit finals Mm -hmm. obviously i think he ended up winning that and and or at the very least doing really well during that and and he just he rode so well it was again like i say just another one of those canadian bronc riders that that came out of the woodwork and that that article from dave i mean kind of emphasized the fact Mm -hmm. that up until last spring he he really hadn't pieced it together and and having been that young bronc rider who hasn't quite got it all figured out (laughs) until it finally clicks I can identify with that, but it was, it was cool how he talked about how, even though his dad, Tom, obviously a, a mm-hmm. very accomplished saddle bronc rider over his years, uh, rodeo and, uh, was trying to tell him, you got a lift, you got a mm-hmm. lift, but it's, it's figuring out how to make that work for you and, and, and make that make sense to you. And, and, and I mean, for most bronc riders, if you told them to push on their rein, that it almost that almost is kind of a negative connotation because it, mm-hmm. it can kind of mess with things a lot, but you look at his style and the way he handles his rain and it just pieces it all together. And, and it's, it's just really, really a great style as, as well as all of the other guys styles too. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to watch these young guys kind of like evolve and, and learn the tools, the, the tips and tools of the trade and, and kind of apply it to, to, uh, mm-hmm. To their, to their craft and, and and kind of make that next step so it's it's going to be exciting times again for for our young saddle bronc riders and our current saddle bronc riders i think it's it's even for a guy like zeke we can probably see him win another third straight world title it's definitely off the table he's at the top of his game and um yeah it's gonna be a fun year i'm, I'm looking forward to, to checking it out um okay with that we're gonna move into our interview this week we actually got logan hay joining us on the show um, it's going to be a fun interview. We're going to talk about his winter so far and some other stuff he's got going on. So we will leave it at that and we will join you all after the interview. Thanks.
All right, we are back with episode number eight of the short round, and I am super excited to welcome my next guest to the show. He recently took home the saddle bronc riding title at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo, and he is also qualified for the Canadian Finals Rodeo and the Wrangler NFR. Welcome to the show, Logan. Hey, Logan, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on? Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining me, dude. I'm stoked to, to get to chat with you. We were we were just talking before we jumped on here. I think we should start off with your uh, probably the grittiest 68 point ride I've ever seen at Rodeo <laughs> Houston last night. But what went down oh, there? Yeah, yeah. So I've uh, I got on a horse at Calgary's called Cracking the Till, and I mean they started us off with the Eliminators last night. Usually when you go to these rodeos, they go give you the nice one first, and then the Eliminators, <laughs> and then maybe your best ones. But they broke us in with the hard ones and. Uh, she turned back right in the gate and it was the, I was bearing down. Like I was not checking over my head to make it look funny. I was having to do bull moves <laughs> just to stay on. <laughs> yeah. And you're pulling, pulling a page of the bull riding book. That's funny, man. So, so yeah, I, I kind of asked you before, like, how does, how do you not end up with a rewrite in that? Is that just the way the pen worked out and, and that's how they roll? Yeah, with it? And just, you still ended up I pulling mean, a check too. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I guess, 68 and I still got a check. Uh, <laughs> No, just she kind of, I mean, she did still buck. I bet they marked the horse good, and it's just really hard to make a good ride on one that's doing that, spinning in the gate like that. Uh, the ju- One judge came up to me after, and he said I would have been 86 in the bull run and would have won second. But <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, unfortunately, she bucked too hard uh, for you to get a re-ride, but it, it was pretty funny. I've had more people text me and call me about that ride <laughs> last night than after I won San Antonio. <laughs> Yeah, that's so good so so speaking of san antonio you, you picked up the win there and it was pretty cool to see you see you do it on a calgary stampede horse it's a little bit of canadian on canadian action there but that's probably one of the bigger wins of your career so let's let's walk through the week it, it kind of went went all your way throughout the whole time yeah for sure no uh i've uh calgary was a big one in san antonio there were two of my biggest wins of my career for sure and uh you yeah, know it just it started good for me i won my set i got a, i placed in every round um and then I didn't draw very good in the semifinals. I just had a young one of surveys. Mm-hmm. And um, luckily in San Antonio, you get to uh, bring your money with you into the semifinals. Yeah. So that was cool. Usually I complain about that. And I just like the top <laughs> scores making it back. So it worked out Helped you out this there. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I just, uh, I think it was like 77 in the semifinals. But I had one enough throughout the week to go back anyways. And uh then it's pretty cool in San Antonio. You get to uh, pick your horse. Um, mm-hmm. It's a random draw, but you get to go ahead and pick one that kind of suits you. And so I I think I was like eighth pick out of 11 and uh, Tokyo was still up there. So nice. I got to pick her and c- good Canadian horse and good Canadian cowboy worked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it worked out good. And like, that's, that's a tough pen of Bronx too in that short round. And, and, and it looked like it was, she, she made you work for all, it was 87 points you were in the short round there. She made you work for every yeah, single yeah. point, eh? For sure. Yeah. She's, uh, I mean, she's a flashy, fl- real flashy. She, uh, makes it look good. Um, but yeah, no, it was, a, she's a little bit of work for sure. She's not uh, a lot of help. Um, but no, it worked out. I've, uh, I've been 87 in that short round before. Like you said, it's usually mm-hmm. real hard and I was 10th place before. In yeah. It. So it was pretty cool. It just, some things kind of had to go my way for it to work out and everything did. So I was pretty pumped. Awesome, man. Well, that's, that's a good way to kind of kick off the season and then gets you in a good spot in the world standings kind of earlier, early in the season. Like, like I said there. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I've never really had a big win in the winter before. I've, mm-hmm. uh, I've had mm-hmm. it last year. I had a decent winner and I, I think I won like 35,000, uh, but I didn't make a single short go all winter. I yeah. did, did good throughout the sets and then I just couldn't put it together. <laughs> so just get one like that. It feels pretty good. Yeah. It's good to get some momentum kind of early off in the season and, and it can, and it, will carry into to the summer as, as we've seen with lots of other guys and speaking of 2023 bro we'll, we'll park 2024 for now but i want to jump back to 2023 you said it, you you had a pretty solid start to the to the season but then you kind of had some injuries plagued you and, and that kind of stuff so talk a bit about that season and and how it probably was a challenge mentally just ha- having to like battle a few injuries after one after another yeah for sure so yeah i had a pretty decent winter i um i think i come out of it yeah with thirty five thousand mm-hmm. or something and then um Came into the spring and I had a horse flip on me and uh, broke my elbow and I think I got six screws and a plate in it and then it also <laughs> tore my uh, UCL which uh, lots of pictures tear and so I had to get the Tommy John surgery and stuff. Oh really? And oh shit. That was all. Yeah. 
So and that was all on my rain arm too. So that made it a lot oh, more difficult coming yeah. back. Uh, the doctor, my, my surgeon told me that I, um, uh, I shouldn't get on a bronc for three months and I don't, I rehabbed it pretty good <laughs> and I ended up getting on in five weeks, which was a little bit, I kind of pushed it a little, yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. way too aggressive, <laughs> but I kind of, I pushed through it throughout the year. I had to ride with a, a bareback riding arm brace on my okay. arm, which was, yeah, it was super restricting. Like I could only, it could only move my arm in a certain amount of movement. And mm -hmm. so it felt really weird. And well, I was thinking about that more than I was thinking about my bronc riding. So that, that kind of, you know, messed with me mentally a little bit, but we grinded it out and I ended up, you know, making enough money that I could get in everything over mm -hmm. the winter. And I think by the time kind of around September, end of August, September, I was finally feeling normal again. Yeah. And, uh, I, I kind of made a good push and I ended up making the CFR in the last rodeo, thank, thankfully. And then I had like, my best CFR to date. So yeah, yeah, from then on out, it's been, uh, I feel like I've been back to normal, but for definitely three or four months in there, I was just battling. Yeah, I wasn't winning very much. I wasn't riding good and it was tough. But. Well, especially like a guy's used to like competing at a certain level. And when you, when you have like a restriction like that, it's gotta be such a, grueling thing to be a part like to have going oh, on for sure kind of in the background yeah. eh? like even yeah, just yeah fun. like even if it wasn't physically restricting us definitely mentally when <laughs> yeah. i was thinking about you can't be thinking about your arm in the bronc right? no, there's too no. much stuff going on <laughs> yeah well it's it's good you're able to finish off the year strong you could you could see like you said yeah that you, you you did well you, you won edmonton kind of got your spot yeah. at cfr and then and then had a strong week there you won a couple of rounds made some really good rides and and how is that momentum you yeah. picked up at the end of the year helped you earlier this year yeah, so like I feel like from the CFR on, I just I made some rides there that felt like myself again back pre uh, injury, and just from then on out, I just I knew myself that I could ride again as good mm -hmm. as I as good as I was anyways, and I just carried that on and just been having fun again, not worrying about stuff and just just rodeo on. <laughs> that's the that's the way to do it, man. And 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 talking so talking about twenty twenty three, I want to go jump back even further to twenty twenty two, which is so far your best season on record you finished third in the world standings mm -hmm. at the nfr you you broke a world record you won the calgary stampede and it's it's a long list of accomplishments that year so what sort of clicked for you in that season and let's talk a bit about how some of the success you had throughout 2022 yeah so 2022 uh that was definitely that's gonna be a tough year to beat for sure <laughs> first first nfr and then yeah all like you said one calgary broke the world record that's gonna be a tough one to beat and uh I don't know. It's just 2021. I missed, I missed the NFR by about 1500 bucks. Mm -hmm, and so, close. you know, that, that, that was a close one, but I know I finally, I think I finally believed in myself that to know that I could be riding with the best in the world. And uh, so I set a goal early that year that I wanted to start in the top 15 and just, and stay there throughout the year. And uh, I broke my ankle in Mercedes, Texas, and I was 14th at that time. And when I, I that it wasn't too bad of a break. I was back mm -hmm. in, six weeks and I was perfectly fine from that on out. But uh, then I think it took me until Calgary again to be back in the top 15. But I really, without the broken ankle, I kind of kept that goal. And I just, I went into that year with the mindset, knowing that I could ride with the best, that I could be the best. And then, and then when it comes to the NFR, that's just a whole new ball game. You know, I was just, I was happy. I got to get on uh, a horse called bubble bath in the first round. And that she's, I've been on her five or six times. So it was like, I got the ice broke with her and mm -hmm. I got my first check in the second round. And then I was just, I was just cruising. I was honestly going to be happy at the, at my first NFR with a single check. Like, yeah. Yeah. So after and you, that, and you were, and you were in the no. mix right till the last round. Like you, you were, you made a ton yeah. of good rides and you were, you were kind of in that, that three-way dog fight for the, the title was Zeke. And, and, and it was pretty cool to watch that like from home, yeah. like just see, see something like how you come in there and just like have that success. It must've been a good feeling while you're doing Yeah. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. To, and then, yeah, to, to come down to actually have a chance at the world uh, at the ninth round there. That was, yeah, it blew, blew my expectations out of the mm -hmm. water, but it made me, definitely made me realize, you know, I can ride with anyone. And, you know, that's that's my goal this year. I want to give Zeke a run for him. I'm sick of seeing him win them all. <laughs> yeah, he's going <laughs> to spread the wealth around a little bit, eh? And, yeah. Well, and how much does that, does that success like that in the far help? Like you mentioned that belief going into 2022, but then how does it even take it to the next level when you know like you said you can ride with those top guys and you you you're a legit like world world title contender oh that's uh that's something i think about all the time like i mean bronc riding is 
I I tell lots of people. I think it's the biggest mental. Well, just rodeo in general, but uh, is the biggest mental game besides golf. Like you have mm, yeah. eight seconds. You have one. You have to think about it all day, and you have eight seconds <laughs> to do your thing. Like you don't you don't get to go get a couple shifts underneath you, like hockey and basketball, and just get dialed in. You've got to be dialed in from the moment you get to the rodeo. So, uh, and I mean, everyone still has. You know, you'll have bad thoughts, like negative thoughts, come in mm-hmm. you. But I, I always resort back to you know that NFR for me and thinking, you know. I was third in the world. I won 200,000 there. If I can do that, I'm pretty sure I can handle this. So yeah, that, that's a good thing for me to always go back to and, and whenever, whenever I get bad thoughts and stuff, which I mean, shoot, that's going to happen for everybody in rodeo. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's nice to have that to go back to. So how much does it, does it help having like, obviously your brother and your dad in your corner? Like for those who don't know your, your dad, Rod Hay made the NFR 19 times Canadian legends out of our greater than your brother Dawson is, is one of the best in the game right now too. So having, having those guys to kind of lean on and, and help guide you through your career, like that's gotta be a huge, huge thing to have. Oh yeah. It's, it's awesome. I mean, my dad, Roddy, he watches, he watches every time me and Dawson get on it. Yeah. We've got a text. I, I don't even get back <laughs> to my phone and he's already texting and calling me, telling me about what, what's going on and <laughs> how I did and, the only time I know I've done bad is if I've got nothing. Then I'm like, oh, oh no, I must have. <laughs> radio messed silence. Up. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's when I messed up. But uh, no, yeah, that's awesome. And I mean, just to have someone that, to pick through when you're, just to break it down, like he, he sees a lot more things than I do. And same with Dawson. Dawson, we, I watch all of Dawson's rides too. Mm-hmm. We're always uh, talking to each other. And, you know, we go to all the practice pens and all that stuff together. And to have that in your corners, yeah, it's pretty outstanding. Roddy actually raises bucking horses too. So if I ever feel like I'm in a slump, I get to go get on his best one. And <laughs> it work, usually works out good for him too, yeah. though, because he gets videos to me on him. And then <laughs> so it works out. Help, jacks up the price a little, a few, few, few thousand. If a little bit, yeah. Right on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, and that's, sometimes he, th- he thinks I need to get on his Colts and I'm like, I'm over the Colts. <laughs> <right." laughs> Sorry, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No more free labor for you, man. That's funny. No. Um, it's got to be like, I think of, like you mentioned golf earlier. It's got to be like, you know, like when a golfer wins a tournament or somebody, they, they always talk about getting a text from Tiger. It's like for you guys got to be like getting the text from Tiger here from your dad after a good ride or a big win or something. Eh? Uh, oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's exactly what it's like. Yeah. Roddy's like, yeah. He's, he's said a few times. Uh, yeah. Just how impressed he is. And it's like, yeah, that's a, that's a good feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so your brother, you and your brother, are obviously very close. Is there, is there, somewhat of a sibling rivalry between you two of like hey if you can do that i can do it better are you guys pretty is it pretty chill between we're you pretty two chill. we're pretty chill between <laughs> yeah. us there used to be like when we started out we had a big big rivalry <laughs> it was like who could figure it out faster and because it's so tough when you start oh, yeah. it's such a hard hard sport to start so we had one big time there we would egg each other on and we actually got into a few fist fights and stuff <laughs> 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 just just about dumb things, but since we both made it, kind of, it's mm-hmm. it's not like that anymore. I mean, I still definitely w- want to beat him, but if I could see anybody else win, it'd be him. So you talk, you, you talked about, or you mentioned the, the that learning curve of saddle bronc riding, and I, I I stand behind that. Of like, I think going through stock events, saddle bronc riding is the hardest to learn. Did you feel any like added pressure with this, like your family name and, and the expectations there? Was it hard to kind of overcome that, or was was that ever was it never a thing? <laughs> it c- kind of at the beginning, it's like you know my dad's made it and then i actually i got hurt at the beginning and so dawson got like a full year on me and mm-hmm. so it, that was kind of tough when I, i'm starting out and i was a year i'm older and i was a year behind and so that was like that That's was something i had to feeling, battle through. i was oh, yeah man. for the first two years <laughs> of my life i was known as dawson's brother I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you had a rodeo it's like this is dawson hey's brother oh that would drive me yeah. nuts if that was i won my i won, my, I won my first pro rodeo in there like yeah Daw- dawson's brother i'm like what the heck like, <laughs> what am i gonna do man <laughs> but yeah took a took a bit and i mean yeah for both of us we were always roddy's son too which i mean yeah. that we were that's never bothered us but yeah there definitely was some added pressure to, to figure mm-hmm. it out it's like you know roddy's been this successful how uh i better be able to at least figure it out to some extent <laughs> yeah you know what's well, the thing you want you want to make him proud and, and your family name and, and i think that's something you guys have done over the last few years and i think the sky's the limits for you guys but did you think like and there was was there ever any pressure from your dad to like brad saddlebank courses or was it something you guys just oh, wanted to no, do I, from the I, beginning it was it what was, no, what was that uh, like yeah no so we were into shoot we were going to rodeos since 
as long as I can remember. And that's yeah. just something we were always wanting to do. You know, we were playing buck and bulls messing around. We always knew we wanted to be cowboys for sure. And no, there was no pressure. If anything, he was pressuring us to not do it, to go do other <laughs> yeah, things. Like, yeah, yeah. He was definitely going to help us and, you know, make sure that we got the best opportunity possible, got on, got on good saddles. And hmm. I'd say get on good horses, but he actually cracked us out <laughs> on some not good horses. <laughs> it's funny, actually, when we started, me, Dawson, and Chance Brass all started together, and we would just buck in the back uh, in Roddy's. Uh, had a little arena just right at our house there and he had some bucking horses then and about oh it was probably we've been on about 2025 and my grandpa fred sat him down and he's like roddy if you don't get these boys some better horses they're gonna quit (laughs) he was just we were just getting folded for like 20 straight because he's putting us on stuff way over our head (laughs) yeah yeah so that that was kind of funny you'd think he'd have got us some better hoppers but we got it we got that lined out (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got on sour practice or sour saddle horse. The shoots are made of wood, the metal made of steel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, no, there was never any added pressure. He was cool with whatever we wanted to do and he definitely uh set us up for success though, for sure. Yeah, it's a, that's that's just a cool thing just to have that re- it's like a resource, right? Like not a lot of guys have mm-hmm. that. Is it's just like you can you can kind of go to him with any situation and the way his career went and his longevity and, and the success that he had, like he probably could break down anything you can think of when it comes oh, to a saddle sure. mark ride, hey. Absolutely. And then just to get like the fundamentals just from, you mm-hmm. know, a young kid shoot. We were riding the buck and barrel and spur board when we were five or six years old. Like so we've got to got to learn it correct and didn't get any bad habits from the beginning mm-hmm. like I, i've put on several schools nowadays and kids come in there with who've been doing it for the you know the same amount of time but they're doing it the wrong way and so now they yeah. have to completely teach themselves uh, you know the fundamentals back which is a hard thing to break after after a while um so yeah just to be able to have that right from the beginning that's something something i look look past lots of the times just because you know i took for granted but it's uh definitely yeah for sure it's a huge huge, huge, huge huge advantage yeah yeah Yeah, absolutely yeah um do you remember the moment like when it clicked for you i know it happens like pretty much any event in rodeo like there's you're 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 struggling you're learning you're trying to find your way and then there's that one ride where it all just clicks and you're like hey i know what i'm doing do you remember that moment for you for you i do i do actually i got on a horse of uh jesse deck jicks and i actually got on i think three weeks in a row her name was uh quirky emotions and she was just a big slow hopper and i moved my feet on her once like the first week and then from then on i, I spurred her every jump and i was like mm-hmm. okay this is i can figure out how to do this and <laughs> that, i think that was like the winter maybe 2016 16 or 17 and i was just yeah that i remember that you know spurring your first one and just for every jump and then mm-hmm. then you kind of get the feeling and it just kind of clicks from there but then you got to take another step in rodeo too. You kind of figure out, you know, that first one oh, on bronc riding, especially, you know, you get spurring and stuff, but to go from just spurring to, to becoming a professional is another huge step to, you know, taking it from a practice pen ride to being able to do it on rodeo's biggest stage is another huge step. But I think uh, a big moment in my career for sure for that step was uh, I made the final four in, in NOCA and, I got a wild chair. I think it was 21. Mm-hmm. It might have been 21. Or, I don't know. Either way, I got in there. Yeah, it was 21. And I uh, I got on wild chair and I was just like so nervous. I was like, I, I was telling, I didn't know. I couldn't believe I was even in the final four. In Pinocchio. Yeah. And I was just so nervous. I couldn't even think straight. And I just rolled off right at the end of the, right at the end of the gate, basically. And so I, I took that and I built on that. And I thought, you know, I made it here for a reason. I was in the final four for a reason. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, then uh, from then on out, I just, you know, I took a different approach to it. I didn't let, don't let myself get uh, too nervous and just keep it. You don't want to beat yourself, right? Like you you have the tools to do it. You just got to do it. That's (laughs) for lack of a better term. (laughs) If it was only that easy. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's just it though, right? Like it's easy to sit here and say that, but what you got to get into those moments and, and, and find a way to, to, to have that mentality right of like okay i know what i'm doing trust in trust in my training and and what i've everything i've learned over the years and i think that's what separates guys like you and zeke and and doss and all these really top top end guys which makes makes you able to ride these amazing horses night in and night out for sure yeah it's just yeah 
It's believing in yourself. <laughs> it is as simple as it sounds, but yeah. I, and watching Zeke is is a big, uh, big help for that. I mean, you watch him when he gets on and his just his mannerisms and everything. And I, I've learned a lot from Zeke just just mm-hmm. by watching and just his shoe procedure and everything. And I try to try to do something similar for myself. What works for you? But yeah, yeah. And that's that's what you got to do, man. You gotta take take the the things from kind of everybody you're around and like build it into your own style. And and I mean, having a guy like Zeke leading the charge for the Canadian saddle bronc riders these days, like it's it's such a unique or such a cool opportunity, like again for you guys to be around him and and like growing for up sure. with the guy, right? Like you guys, oh yeah, having access. Like, it's like having access to your dad, right? Like another guy like that, just like <laughs> another super successful dude to to bounce stuff off, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, just meets one of all of our best buddies too. So it's pretty cool. And I just want to beat him this year. But. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, it's 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 a good opportunity. I think it's going to be it's like a fun race. So that I always look. Saddlebone Crowding has like become my favorite event in rodeo, and it's always fun to watch the races unfold. Even in, up here in Canada, we got such a good group of guys that oh, um, it's, it's going to be a fun year. I think. Yeah, for sure. It's even. Yeah, we were talking about that last year at the Canadian Finals. There was five or six great bronc riders that didn't even make the canadian finals yeah. like and it's just unreal and then yeah the canadian finals was really good as well and yeah it's pretty pretty cool time to be a bronc rider in canada yeah, and it's neat. just anywhere really yeah and it's funny to think like a guy like zeke's the the, the veteran of the group and he's like not even 30 yet right like there's so many yeah. good young guys and he's had so much success early in his career and like you're like you're a young guy and dawson's young you got guys like dawson dom and q taylor and all these other guys oh, kind of making ben, their way yeah. like yeah, Ben and, and Colby. I, I think Colby's gonna have a big yeah. year. He's off to a great start, and it's gonna be it's yeah, gonna be fun, sure. man. And we could have like almost ten guys in the NFR just in bareback riding. Oh, if, we could, uh, if we could all stay healthy, we, yeah, we, that's, we, the tick, that's the ticket. That's the ticket. Yeah, cool, man. Well, I wanna I wanna talk about your world record. I know we kind of briefly touched on it. So, twenty twenty two hard yeah. grass bronc match. You you got on uh, explosive skies, and you you guys combined for a home run, hit ninety five and a half yeah. points. Uh, I want to talk about both rides. So, I want to try something. I'm going to pull it up here and I want to see if we can watch it. And then I want you to kind of break it down for me. Then we'll talk a bit about the, the afterwards and stuff like that. Yep. So like I said, hard graph bronc match, 2022 yep. Logan Hay explosive sky. So t- tell us what's going through your mind here and then kind of break down the ride. As we move so I, I was the last guy out. Obviously I won the long round. And so I got to pick her first. Um, she really squats on the, like on the inside, which is funny because lots of, lots of horses typically want to squat on the outside of the gate. They'd go against it. So I just had Ben uh, push on her a little bit, and she blows out of there faster than any horse. It feels like a grenade going off, and then it doesn't stop. It's just, it is, her name is the most soothing thing that you could have. Explosive is like, that's what she feels like every jump. From the moment you nod your head to the moment you get off, it is like, it's like no other horse I've ever been on in my whole life. It, you honestly feel like you're going to get bucked off the entire time and you have just got to be gassing as hard as you can if you want any chance well and you can just see it man like like you know like some rides you can you you kind of see a guy and you can you see them like locked into a ride and like they're gonna make they're gonna make in the control or get, in control whereas yeah. like like with her she she's throwing a knife at you or pulling something on you like every single jump and you're making every no single jump it. oh yeah it's just like you honestly don't know if you're going down or if you're going to be there the next jump but you, you just have to keep gassing as hard as you can it's the only thing you can do and you ask like my brother he's he's got a, a couple of big scores and she's bucked them off and zeke too he's like man that thing makes me nervous every time i get on <laughs> yeah it. yeah <laughs> it's uh She's something else. She she really is in that, a league of her own, and um, yeah, she, that's an amazing horse. And it was pretty that when I had her there, I'd seen Zeke get on her the year before, and it was mm-hmm. that was the rankest horse I'd ever seen in my life. Really? But I think when I had got on her, I was only the third trip ever in the bronc riding, and it mm-hmm. oh, it always been at Pollockville. We always got to get on her at Pollockville. We, we always get to try a couple of them real good barebacks there, which is always exciting. Um, and yeah, I was the third trip ever. So ever. you know, you really don't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. I knew she was going to buck and <laughs> I wasn't expecting it like that though. <laughs> so, so how did, so when you got off, like what was, what was going through your head? Like, were you, was it like, what was the feeling you had? I was just off like, or? honestly, like I said, like she just feels so explosive and you really don't know how, how good, I didn't know how good I rode her. I knew I was swinging every jump and it was, it was like, I, I knew that she was bucking. So I knew I was going to get a good score. Uh, that's how I, I tipped my hat to her. I was like, that's the rankest horse I've ever been on. The rankest I've ever strapped my saddle to for hands down. And uh, 
just with the whole build up and everything, Colby was 94 right before mm-hmm. me. And uh, I didn't know if I was going to beat Colby or not, but I was 91 in the long round. So I was like, I've probably got a pretty good chance that <laughs> yeah. I'm going to win this. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I know it's 95 sure and a that, half. Yeah. That's got to be the biggest two head average ever. <laughs> and yeah, no and doubt, man. No doubt. That's a big event. Holy cow. 186 and a half. I don't know if they'll get to that one for a while. That's, that's, a, that's a record in its own right, eh? Like, damn, that's crazy, <laughs> yeah. dude. Yeah, um, so, so no, that was a pretty crazy day. That's cool, man. It's, it's And it's cool that you guys were able to do it, like, on home soil, like, just down the road from the ranch where yeah. those horses are raised. And and I, I love Pollockville. I think it's just such a cool venue and, and place to showcase the best in the world. Yeah, oh, for sure. And yeah, them horses, they I think they just feel right at home and mm-hmm. they have unbelievable days there. And videos take away from it. They always do in rodeo, like everybody says it. But Pollock feels something else, though. When you're there, you it's it's completely different. You people, I tell people they've got to experience it for themselves to mm-hmm. to truly understand it. Um, another really cool thing about that ride is it did uh, punch my ticket for the NFR. I was safe after that, after what oh, I nice. was there for my first NFR. So that was, that was a pretty special day. That one. I'll double never whammy. It. A double whammy. Yeah, perfect. So, so the year before your brother broke the, 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 the record with a 95 point ride and wild cherry, actually, you just mentioned her. Yeah. Um, how, what was that cool? Like, so you got to watch Dawson break the year before, like talk a bit about watching him make that ride in wild cherry. And then we'll go. We'll yes. The second part so of the that's question. the thing. Like that's the thing where I tell people about how they've got to experience it. Just, when you're watching that short round, there's 40 bronc riders on the shoots. You barely can get like, <laughs> on your horse because everyone is so pumped just because it's like there's the energy is four or five nineties, four or five nineties yeah. going on. And so, yeah, I got to watch Dawson do it the year before. So I kind of, I kind of understand what the feeling was like on the sh- behind the shoots. And so, yeah, no, that Dawson's was amazing. We were so pumped and everyone threw their hats. And so to watch it, from behind the shoots and then to experience it for myself yeah. i got to do both ends and yeah no it uh that's what i say the energy in pollock feels unbelievable and just seeing them horses live and what they do especially for us when we get to see them all year and we see what they're like in you know houston here mm-hmm. or, you know calgary even to to what they do there is something something mm-hmm. else um so so do you have a little bit of bragging rights over dawson now that's that's what you get for you I, finally, around, I finally got it back i'm not dawson's brother anymore <laughs> yeah. yeah he's logan's brother they're now. my brother yeah. logan's brother <laughs> oh man that's awesome uh, good yeah. stuff um so i want to i want to get into to the bronc match thing it seems more and more popping up nowadays and you guys have have the one in wildwood obviously your hometown and, and the hard grass mm-hmm. and so he's got a bronc riding come up this year and there's a ton down in the u.s like how has that changed the game for bronc riding with having more money available. You guys are competing on the best horses all the time and against the best guys on a more consistent basis. Yeah. I love the Bronx matches. It, uh, it honestly, it brings the best out in, in it, all the Bronx riders. You watch the first section going. So someone makes a good ride and then everybody just shows up and you get, you get the best of everyone. Like, you go to some rodeos and sometimes it's just the, the vibes aren't there and whatever. And you just like, you don't want to be there, but there's, mm-hmm. you can be at a Bronx match with 200 people there and it's just you all the Bronco riders have such a great friendship and we just stir each other up and we feel <laughs> I, I brings the best out of you every, every time. And, and now that we get to keep riding for more and more money and shoot, I think, uh, well, rapid city had 101,000 mm. and Newtown just had over a hundred thousand. It's, it's unbelievable what we're getting to ride for these days. And just, yeah, people are loving to come watch the Bronco matches and we love them too. If I could just go to Bronco matches, I would besides the, <laughs> Besides a few of, of my the big rodeos, rodeos yeah, for sure. But <laughs> no, it's well, it, uh, it's awesome that that's where where it's gone. It's cool, man. It, 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 and like you say, all the money that's added, and it just it just amplifies it. And I think people want to see that, right? Like you look at like hard grass, like sells out all the time. I haven't been up to Wildwood yet, but I know you guys get a crazy crowd there, like for the event there. Yeah, it's been. And it's just we uh, touch something about it. Yeah, yeah, we've got Calgary there the past couple of years now, and it's it and or, uh, it's took a huge step too. It's just it's been unbelievable since we've got Calgary there. And uh, Wildwood was actually the first ever approved uh, PRCA approved Bronc match ever, and now oh, nice. now I think there's over forty. So it's yeah, just, it's gone crazy, and I, just in the last ten years, uh, you know, they've just took huge steps. So. No, I love going to Bronx matches, and they they're all just improving. They're all adding more money. We're all they're all got better horses, and yeah, it's it's pretty cool. 
So you mentioned you mentioned how Wildwood's the the first approved Bronc match. I didn't I didn't know that, but how so how did that idea come to be? Like, did you guys have a lot of a hand in that, and and what what do you do with it today? Oh yeah, so Roddy puts the whole. It was his idea, you know. I think I think he did about ten years of it just being an invitational mm-hmm. deal, um, and then you know he just he was talking to uh, Rusty Allen was the PRCA director at the time, and uh, Roddy and Rusty were really good friends. They went to the NFR a bunch mm-hmm. of times together, and. Uh, Roddy kind of just put it in his ear, you know, what what would it be like if we could get, because they had already had the extreme bulls going at that time, lots of yeah. single, single event bull runnings, but this, there had never been a single event bronc and Roddy kind of put it in his ear and he got it, the ball rolling and yeah, that just kind of started a domino effect and they just, from then on out, it just grew exponentially. But more and more and more. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of cool that our, our little hometown of wild at 400 people got the, the first ever PRCA approved to draw that. Yeah, man, that's, I find that so cool. That's, it's great. And, and, and it's, it's become again, like, I think I see it almost on the same level as the hard grass. Like last year there was like three nineties in the short round. And, and it's one of those, yeah. one of those places where the best come to play and, and they really rise to the occasion. For sure. Yeah. And it's just, uh, yeah, them adding Ket- that Calgary was a huge step for that. Mm-hmm. You know, we've, mm-hmm. uh, we've always had good horses. It's always been really fun. But then when you're, Getting on explosive skies while Jerry and all of them. <laughs> and it makes you step it up to the next level. 100%. Sure. Um, yeah. So we talked, we, we briefly touched on this of like the wave of Canadian Bronc riders, and, and you're definitely a big part of that. And I want to know through your eyes, like, how have so many of you been able to find success at a high level? I know, like, we're, we're so spoiled with the Bronx that we're able to have up here, and just like obviously guys like your dad kind of helping guide you down the path. But what, what do you think is one of some of the biggest reasons why you, there's so many guys having? good success yeah i don't know what like and it, lots of us that are having success you know we kind of all grew up together and i think mm-hmm. it's kind of just how we've pushed each other you know we're seeing we're seeing our buddies right beside us go ahead and you know win the best rodeos do is be successful on the biggest stage and i think that's kind of just pushed us to know know that we can do it you know we've been getting on in practice pens and rimby with this guy for <laughs> five years before this and now he's winning the biggest rodeos going and it's like well if he can do it i can do it kind of thing sure. um and we all shoot like we all go to a lot of practice friends. We like I feel like we get on a lot of bucking horses compared mm-hmm. to to some people, and and we were all doing it together and all that. And I don't know. We've always had a we're always blessed in Canada. I think we have some of the best practice friends in the world. Where you know you can go just about anywhere. We've got great pickup men. We have all of our colts in Canada. Like you go to Benny Binion Sale in uh, in Vegas there, and you know half of the horses getting sold are Canadian. That, mm. that we've you know got to practice on and go so we're blessed with that where we've had great pickup horses or great pickup men and great horses to get on and as well you go to just about anywhere and you've got an nfr cowboy there to, to yeah. help somebody out and you know he might even be getting on that lot so. <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> for sure yeah when you mentioned the practice men too and how many horses you get on i think i think that's one thing that maybe gets overlooked or is kind of taken for granted where guys will get to a certain point of their career and think, well, I don't need to go to practice pens anymore. Like I've made it. I'm at the top of my game. Whereas right. that's not something that's going to help you get to that next level. Whereas as you guys seem, seem to be taking the opposite approach. Yeah. So no, we, uh, I get on a lot of practice horses. If I ever feel like I'm going more than two weeks without getting on, I, I want to get on. Like that's it. You, I, I can go to the gym and do all that. And I do go to the gym and, you know, stay, stay fit but there's nothing like getting your mental game you cannot work on your mental game or anything like that without actually getting on and it just makes you like i feel like i get into a rodeo mode you know like yep. the first horse of the weekend is my hardest one every time i've got to you know <laughs> get dialed in start thinking about it i get on him and then i just feel like i'm back in the rodeo mode and i'm good to go so like in the middle of the summer you really never get out of it you're no. getting on every other day but the winter time that's where it's the hardest where you're you can go two weeks sometimes without getting on a horse mm-hmm. and then you've got to, you know, get back in the rodeo. Get her going and, again. And, yeah. And get her rolling again. So that's where I, I like to get on a lot of practice horses in the winter time and mm-hmm. before and everything. But yeah, that's when I feel the most dialed is just when I'm getting on a bunch. And I, I think that's an important thing. Uh, so, so as part of this wave, and you mentioned this before too, that you put on a few schools and, and being around your dad and all this kind of stuff. So if I'm a young bronc rider coming to you for advice, what what would what would be your biggest pieces that you would give to me to kind of find success at the top so, levels? So yeah, just yeah. Well, I always just talk about you know your mental game. You just got to believe that you know you belong there. You can you've made this ride before. You just got to go back to your best rides and and just believe that you can you can compete with anybody. Uh, you, you've just got to truly believe in yourself because no one else is going to do that for you. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's that's that, uh, that you hit the nail on the head there, man. I think that's the biggest thing is is although you have your buddies and people you're traveling with and whatever, but you're you're they can believe in you, in you as much as they want, but if you don't believe in yourself, <laughs> nothing's gonna happen. And that's it. No, and and especially with rodeo, you know, it's it's a pretty intimidating sport. You know, you're getting on something that weighs <laughs> a thousand more pounds than you. There's, it's <laughs> yeah. not when you're gonna get injured. It's or it's not if it's when, and mm-hmm. so you got to look past that and deal with all that and. So there's a lot of things that come to it, but that's where it's got to, you just got to believe that you can do it or, or it's going to go bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so who, who are you traveling with these days? Uh, have you been with the same kind of crew over the last few years? Have you been going pro or you kind of switched up a little bit or who, who are you rolling with? Um, so I always, I've, since my rookie year, me and Ben Anderson have gone together. We've been together yeah, since then. And so I'll probably travel with Ben the rest of my life, honestly. And <laughs> we've, uh, We've been going with Q Taylor as well and yep. uh, Kaze Thompson a bit, but poor Kaze has been having having Hex oh, staying healthy. Yeah, he was just he's just he was riding so good this winter too. He was looking back to the year he almost made the finals there, and then he blew his other knee out. So now he's got two completely completely busted up knees, which is super too bad. But that's that's just rodeo, and mm-hmm. that's how it goes. Uh, but hopefully he can get back healthy and we'll get we'll add him back to the rig again but yeah. right now it's going to be me uh me ben and q taylor are going right on we, we went all last year together and we're going to go again this year that's fun man i i i, I really i admire ben a lot he's a fun guy to watch and like always always happy to be around and cracking jokes so oh, one of my yeah. favorite moments is uh last year the cfr when you and ben were watching the the novice from behind the shoots you guys were just having like such a good time you could just tell that there was yeah. like that chemistry and you guys like kind of just you guys run the same wave which oh, yeah. is kind of cool to have in a traveling partner yeah for sure yeah and we're just always yeah just keeps it light keeps it yeah we just get along <laughs> yeah. great and it's you're always joking around doing dumb stuff and that helps you helps you not overthink it for sure yeah it keeps light <laughs> on the road you know you guys spend a lot of miles in the truck together and, and and if it's always serious oh, all the time, it kind of it could wear thin on a guy pretty fast. That's that's one of the the other things in rodeo that is often gets overlooked is you've got to have a good traveling mm-hmm. group. If you're if you've got tension in the rig, it's going to translate to your riding. We uh we spend more time together than people do with their wives. So <laughs> <laughs> it's true. you got to pick them good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so do you guys have any like like uh? traditions or like if if somebody wins somebody's got to do something or somebody bucks off something soon do you have any like kind of uh i don't even know what the word is but do you have anything like that kind yeah, of in your no. rig any rules of the rig i guess you could call them. not really uh, just high scores always got to buy beers after but <laughs> we yeah. uh we don't really have any rules we were talking about that we want to make one for if you miss a horse so we're gonna make oh, we're gonna come up with something it's gonna be something embarrassing we've got to do the next time so. <laughs> We tried it. We tried it that you had to shotgun your boots, but we need to do so. We're going to find something that's more embarrassing. <laughs> <That's laughs> you had to shotgun. We, we did do that actually at our first CFR. If you missed your horse, so you had to shotgun your boots at the next one you got on. But we're going to come up with something a little yeah. better this year. That's, that's, it'd be, fu- it's funny because like if you don't, if, if like you didn't know it, you wouldn't really like know the difference. But if it's, no, if you see, know, that's it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. See, if, for us Broncos, we thought it's funny, but I want something that everyone's funny. <laughs> yeah. Everybody really can see. I was traveling with Cole. We tra- me and Ben traveled with Cole on our rookie year, and mm-hmm. the, we uh, if you missed a horse out that year, you had to wear suspenders. And so Cole missed the horse <laughs> out in San Antonio, and he got on in Houston with a set of suspenders. Oh man! And he had Bob Tallman announcing it too, and Bob did a huge <laughs> spiel on his suspenders. It was pretty hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's so good. So, so I, I actually sent Ben a text before we hopped on here that yesterday and they asked him if there's anything I should ask you about or any fun stories he has. And, and he wanted me to ask you about, uh, if you've ever almost been in an accident on your way to a rodeo, if you could dive oh, into that. A ben, little bit. You asked Ben? Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Traveling with Ben every time is almost an accident, but Ben, <laughs> so this one time we were headed to me, Leighton and Ben, and I don't remember where we were going to, but we were playing risk on, uh, on Leighton's iPad and we, yeah. Me and Leighton said, you know, the driver's not allowed to play risk. You know, you've got to focus on the road. And Ben's like, oh, I'll be all right. Just let me drive. Let me play. And we're like, all right. Well, when Ben plays risk, or even if you're watching a movie or something, his eyes don't leave the iPad. Like, we're watching the road more than he is. <laughs> and so when he's sitting there and he's playing, he's making his move on risk. And me and Leighton look up and we're like, Ben. And there was a flat deck parked in the, on the side of the road that was oh, halfway into our lane and he just yanked the truck into the ditch and got around it and he was just like okay maybe the driver's not allowed to play risk 
Oh my we, god. We were a foot from hitting a parked flat deck in it. Oh, it was. Oh my brutal. god. That'll get the blood going, eh? <laughs> yeah. You know, ben is a terrible driver. He's hit the <laughs> ditch while I've been sleeping in the camper before, too. And I just, I was just rolling in the around. Camper. I bounced off the top of the camper and I was just like, I hit the thing and I was like, oh, we're rolling. And I was like, I'm. I just accepted death. I'm like, this is it. This is the end of it. <laughs> this is a, thanks I for guess everything. he's, I guess he swerved and just missed the deer. What he wasn't doing, it didn't fall asleep or anything, but yeah, oh, it's a wreck man. almost every time Ben <laughs> drives. It's scary. It's the moral of the story. If Ben ever offers to drive you around, say no. And definitely don't go to sleep with him driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. I got a two part question for you, Logan. Uh, okay. We have a ton of great bucking horses, both sides of the border. What horse do you want to get on the most that you haven't been able to get on quite yet? Ooh. Well, that's a tough one. I, I've been blessed with being able to get on, you know, lots of the best horses in the world. But one horse I've never got on, which I feel like she's going a little downhill anymore, but is Lunatic from Hell. I've been mm. in the same I've been in a short round with that horse probably twelve times and I never have got on her. So I'd really like to get on her and then Oh, I don't know what all or nothing too. I haven't, I've have not mm -hmm. got to get That's on all or nothing. So, so them too, that them are probably my two. All or nothing would probably be the one. You know, he's getting. You still get nineties on him every time. But I also want to get on lunatic from hell before uh, before he gets retired. So part two, what horse out there is the most intimidating to you, or kind of has the the reputation of the baddest, kind of going down the road right now? Oh. Lunatic from hell, or uh, not lunatic, or sorry, Explosive Skies makes you definitely bear down. Like, I mean, you're you're going to be bearing down at, at, at the entire time. And I feel like right now we don't have, uh, like, a big, scary eliminator that there always mm -hmm. is. Like, you know, since Killer B got retired, there's none that are out there that you're going, holy cow. But honestly, cracking the tilt last night was pretty terrifying. <laughs> I'm going to be very <laughs> scared next scary. time I have to get <laughs> yeah. on that. Yeah. That thing bucked like a bull around there hard. Uh, so I will be very intimidated by him, but I'll probably explosive skies. Like mm -hmm. there's just, mm -hmm. she is just as honest as can be, but it's still as she's intimidating. <laughs> well, so I wanted to ask you this before we were talking about explosive skies. So you mentioned when you broke the record under, there was her third trip in the saddle mark riding. She was a bareback horse before. How did that transition happen? Like, were you bugging like goose and Tyler to like try her in the saddle mark riding? Like, did you guys see something in, in her that was like, Hey, this would make a good saddle mark riding horse. So what's the story there? Well, yeah, I think we always knew she was going to be a good one. Uh, she, I think the beginning of her career, she started out a little wilder and they kind of need to settle down and get a more pattern trip. Um, she won the halter, I think the year before I got on her, um, and she was the world champion bareback. And then they didn't buck her in the 10th round or something. And so mm -hmm. that kind of, that kind of made Tyler and goose a little mad, you know, they didn't put her in the TV pen and they're like, yep. well, you guys messed up. Cause now she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get uh, boys. That's, that's what you get. So no, uh, I think that was just it. I, you could tell by, you know, the, a little bit towards the end of her career, she was covering a little more ground in the bareback riding. Mm -hmm. And generally when they do that, they'll bring them, bring them nice. So, uh, and then, yeah, just them not bucking her in the 10th round. I think that made him mad. And now, now she's ours. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay. One more thing uh, with, with, so killer B, you mentioned that horse is a, they're one of the baddest horses that's ever been around and, and your brother made an outstanding ride on her at the NFR it would have been 2022, right? Yes. Or, sir, yeah. Yes. The year you were there. Yeah. yeah. So huge ride yeah. round 10. That's another one where you got to like be on the back of the shoots and witness an outstanding ride. So talk a bit about watching yeah. that and how cool it was to watch your brother snap that horse. Oh, that, that was unreal. That uh, So I just won, I won rounds five, six, and seven. Eight, we both placed, and round nine is when he had her. So it mm. was, uh, that was that was the best bronc ride I've seen personally in my life, like in real life. I mean, I, his 95 and Wild Cherry was super, super good too, but that one was something else. So at the NFR, the, her last trip, the, it was unbelievable. Like everybody was going crazy. The whole Thomas and Mac was was going nuts. I, I can't believe that that wasn't the arena record, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, that was, man, the <laughs> pictures no, that and the was, video from that are nuts. Oh, it was un oh, unreal, man. Yeah, we got to go to the South Point four out of five nights in a row. It was, it was, oh, I was honestly fun. like, I'm ready to just go to bed. I don't need to go again. <laughs> yeah, there's no fun being had at all with that, eh? <laughs> no, no, there definitely was. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Okay, well, one last thing before we wrap up here. Uh, what's, where can people kind of keep track of you and, and what's the rest of 2024 shaping up? Like, I know you've probably got a busy schedule as we move through into the spring and summer. Yeah, so... 
Uh, I've been just taking it easy this winter. I usually uh, enter a few more rodeos, but this year I've just been. Go- I just went to the big, big ones, and I'm just taking it easy. Uh, I, you can fly around and go to a bunch of rodeos in the winter time, but you just you end up wearing yourself out. Mm. Everybody's going in the winter, so I'm just taking it easy. Uh, I'm in Houston tonight and tomorrow, so the um, fifth and the sixth, and then I'm gonna go. I'll be at the American. Uh, me and Dawson both are nice. million dollar contenders over there, so Hell we're yeah. gonna. We'll ride there on Saturday the 9th, and then uh, I go to Austin, and I'm just going to go home after that and kind of take it easy till the springtime, just go to the Canadian rodeos in June, and then uh, we'll go full board come the end of June. We'll be we'll be gone mm-hmm. till the end of August again. So, Well, I, and so, okay, sorry, one more thing. You mentioned, like, kind of taking it a bit easier in the wintertime, and I think at one time you used to really have to go hard in the winter and make a bunch of money to cover yourself in case there was a slump or whatever, right, in the summer. But right. Now there's so much money available, like we mentioned with the, the Bronx matches and more rodeos adding big money, like Paroka uh, upping their added money and stuff like that. I think yeah, it's not, you don't have to go quite as hard to still make as much money or make more money, right? No, you don't. And it's nice. Um, I mean, now that I have qualifications and, you know, I don't have to worry about getting into, into rodeos and you don't have to worry about, you know, busting, busting mm-hmm. your butt in the wintertime. And, and like you said, there's just so much money to be won in the summer and, Every everyone's adding their up, uh, adding their money. It's just it's it's crazy anymore. But uh, yeah, like Lefty, Lefty last year had a bad winter. He didn't draw worth the worth the crap all winter. I think he came out of the winter like forty eighth in the oh, world, wow. and which is you know pretty surprising for mm-hmm. Lefty. And you know he still managed to you know get on fire, make the finals easily. Yeah. Ended up I think six in the world. So it uh, you don't have to have a good winter, but it definitely helps because there's. You get a couple big checks in the winter. It just takes takes a lot of pressure for off. Sure. Where, yeah. So yeah, man. Thanks again for doing this. I really appreciate you making it work and and, and kind of flexing yeah. the schedule. I know we tried we tried nailing down a couple of days over the last couple of weeks. So I, I'm so excited about this. And and yeah, we wish you all the best in the rest of the season. Good luck in Houston tonight. Hopefully, you get a bucker there. We'll all be watching and cheering for you. And yeah, best of luck this season. And we'll definitely see you down the road this summer. I appreciate it. Thanks, Wesley. Already, once again, thank you, Logan Hay, for joining us on the short round this week. It was awesome to see you have your success in San Antonio, and we are stoked to watch you through the rest of 2024. All right, Clay, back half of the show, we got some more people we want to talk about who've been having uh, a, a good winter, kind of alongside Logan. Um, one of those guys is Stephen Culling. He's he kind of it seems like he picked up right where he left off. Like he had a really outstanding 2023 season, maybe not the best CFR that he wanted, but had a really solid NFR, and now he's he's kind of clipping away. Like he's got second in San Antonio. He got some money out of Fort Worth, I think. Um, and now he's off to a good start in Houston, winning second and first in his first two rounds. And he's currently sitting seventh in the world. So what can we expect of Steven for the rest of the year? I think you're just going to expect much of the same thing. I think consistency is a big part of his game. Mm-hmm. He's He's been a a top competitor since since high school. He, he won the national high school championship mm-hmm. back in the day. And and I mean, he has just carried on that level of excellence his, his whole career. And and we're just really starting to see him really piece it all together on the biggest stage. And 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 that just keeps going. The more of those guys are are spending time with those guys and, and riding mm-hmm. the right horse and that bulldog and, and everything, I think you're just gonna see bigger and better things out of him. And you can you can just see it in his like just as like the way he carries himself. Even last night I I watched the video and he rode in the box, backed in, the horse's butt touched the back uh padding or whatever and he was nodded and out and it, it's just cool to see a guy with that type of confidence and 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 it paying off for him it, it's it's super great to see um another one that we need to talk about is is shelby magid i guess we is, is the way she's typing her name these days but she's back to her winning ways split second in san antonio and and i think she's a she's a threat no matter where she goes i know you mentioned before we started recording she's a, she wrote so solid and, and, and is always in the mix no matter where she is yeah she just again obviously is riding good horses roping good i mean that breakaway it's it's such a timing thing i mean in the calf roping you can get those guys that are better on the ground or or get get it on them quicker or things like that the breakaway you don't have that that leeway mm-hmm. of take that extra swing otherwise you're not making any money and, and she just pieces it all together so well and and so consistent so consistently it was it seemed like it was only a matter of time before she was going to get that world title last year yeah. i mean she just she was knocking on the door and and I, I don't think it'll be the end of it for sure. And and mm-hmm. I, I know both her and her husband Haven there, they just 
they both are just incredible horse people and and rope oh. so amazingly. Yeah, they're 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 killers. Those two, they 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 do some good work, and and it seems like the the breakaway competition is kind of like ramped up in their notch. You know, we saw re- I mean records getting broken in San Antonio, and it's like if you're not under one point nine or one point eight, a lot of times you're not even kind of scratching the surface of it. So it's kind of neat to see the the gals really taking that the sport to that next level. Yeah, for sure. You you like seeing that. It's it it it's so so quick. And I mm-hmm. think that's that's part of why it's all caught on so well is it's it's just a, a great event. I I've always been a big fan of the mm-hmm. breakaway rope and 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 everything like that. So I'm just so grateful to see that it's catching on and and yeah, these you're you're just seeing a whole other class of of horsewomen that that didn't mm-hmm. necessarily have a an avenue for competing in that suddenly they're they're showing the world what they're made of and it's it's pretty incredible so another guy i'm super talk are super excited to talk about in this in this part here is jake gardner he's off to his best start of his career in the prca he picked up second in san antonio with a huge 89 and a half point ride in the short round and and he's sitting 15th right now in the world standings and I, jake i just i love the way his approach to the sport he's such a passionate guy and, and rides a lot of fire even when he bucks off you can see he he really really cares about how he performs and and just to see him having the success is, is pretty awesome yeah for sure i mean he's a cowboy he uh he makes sure he takes care of things and and he rides really well and he's he's seeing the results and and that's that's great to see again mm-hmm. we're we're seeing more of those bull riders that are they're making their way south again in the the prca and and having having good results i mean you see jared and jordan these last couple yeah. of years making it back to vegas and and it's 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 just a matter of keeping that going. Yeah, and I, I think the like those guys leading the charge charge kind of shows the rest of the crew that it's not impossible. Like you you can do it, and it, it's just a matter of believing in yourself and putting in the work, and and good things will happen. Oh, for sure, yeah, and 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 I mean just showing that yeah, the the PRCA and the PBR, you, you can do them. Mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. can pick and choose. You, you can decide which way you want to go, but. For the longest time, it seemed like we had a lot of good Canadians going to the PBRs, but they, they didn't necessarily prioritize the PRCA. So mm-hmm. I think maybe having Calgary count for the, the NFR maybe helps that or for sure. or just different things like that that suddenly make it. Where, again, you, you look at a guy like Jared wins the Calgary Stampede and suddenly you're like, OK, yeah, we're we're going to Vegas again if we yeah. keep this up. So, Heck yeah, that's awesome. Um, So before we move on, I, I want to talk about uh, the Graham brothers. They're uh they're kind of off to they're like not haven't really like shot the lights out anywhere, but they're picking away, getting solid times. And and like you said, I think it's it's going to be hard to deny them being in Vegas come December. Yeah. You know, last year that was such a dog fight in that team rope and they were on the inside for a while and and then just just barely uh, missed out on it. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, the, those two young guys, I mean, they ride so well, they rope just outstanding and, and they have their whole lives. I mean, mm-hmm. they're just they're really just masters of their craft and 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 work so well together and and yeah they they put the team in team roping and they they just really they really have it i i think they're they're gonna figure it out and and i think those guys down south are are scared of them and <laughs> Yeah, and no, that's be, saying something because there's some tough rope attempts. So. Yeah, that's for sure, man. And it's it's cool because we, we they know I think they know they can hang and, and we know they can hang. And it'll be like if like you say, it's going to be a matter of time before we see them down in Las Vegas. So it's going to be an exciting year down the trail in 2024. All right, Clay. Before we before we wrap up, I want, you were telling me about the picture behind you, and it has a really cool story. And I, I'd like you to break that down for the folks listening. So the picture behind me here. This uh, this was. A picture from uh, the year I, I filled my card, the ride that filled my card. And and this was in 2007. I got to get on War Cry uh, of Weatherly's at Falkland, BC, and was 86 and a half points that day. And, and again, that filled my CPRA card and, and kind of kicked off my uh, career. And uh, War Cry and I, we had quite a few different go rounds, very very few of them worked out in my favor. He, uh, he bested me quite a few times and, and everything. But, uh, the, the super neat thing about this picture was, is I had, I'd heard about it. It was in a newspaper and, and everything. I had, uh, somebody from out around BC had brought it up the one time, but, uh, I had never actually seen it. And, and I had mentioned it to my, uh, at the time fiance 
And she had actually tracked down the local newspaper in Falkland and asked them if they had photographers. And 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 obviously this was in 2015 when she finally mm-hmm. started doing this. So this is eight years after. And and she was able to find the photographer and, and he didn't know which photo it was. He just gave her a file full of all of the photos he took from there. And and she was able to track it down and she got this this picture blown up and and framed. Wow. And uh, she said she was going to give it to me for Christmas, but then she uh, thought about it, giving it to me earlier. And it turned out uh, the FCA finals in 2015, I had decided was going to be my last, last go around ride in saddle bronc horses. So she gave it to me that weekend and it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty, pretty cool thing to, to get. So I've always been pretty uh, proud to, to have that memory yeah. to, to have. So. Well, and now with, with War Cry being inducted to the Canadian Provincial Hall of Fame, it has a little bit more meaning to it now. It's pretty cool. Yeah, no, the Weatherleys were were incredible to me. I used to practice in Stetler all the time every winter, and Warren and Stan and I would sit on the back of the shoots. And I there was one time I was the only guy that showed up, so I was <laughs> I, I got to pick which horses I wanted to get back at that had got me before at practice and. And, uh, but the whole Weatherly family has just treated me so well over the years. And, uh, and, and yeah, so there's a, there's a huge part of me that, uh, that goes with that horse. And, and despite, <laughs> despite the fact he, uh, he definitely, uh, had my number more than I did his, I, uh, always really was glad to have, <laughs> have some memories with him. So for sure. Well, that's awesome. Clay. Well, well, thanks again for joining me today. It, it, like I said, it helps to have somebody to, to shoot the shit with and kind of move through this stuff and, and and we'll definitely be bringing you back on for some future co-hosting duties well sounds good again i i really i really enjoy what you're doing here it's it's great to see the the podcast realm and, and just the digital realm of of media and everything that's really come along with the sport of rodeo it's just it, it just brings it to light and, and puts it out in the in the world just so much more and 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 we need that Mm-hmm. And, and I think again, that cowboy channel just gives it that space and, and it's just, it's becoming such a part of, of just even more regular world. I mean, a lot For of sure, people man. that are now following rodeo that, and, and watching it religiously, uh, that wouldn't have previously. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, is it's open the yeah. door, man. And, and like being cowboy is cool again. And, and I think just having that access and there's so many neat stories to tell. And I think that's being able to have these types of platforms and social media and, and cowboy channel, all these types of things. Like there's, there's ways for us to reach a broader audience. And, and it, it's, it worth, I'm thankful that this is my way to give back and being able to help help grow what I love and, and get back to it in a way that, that is easy for me to do. So like I said, yeah, yeah thanks again for joining for sure. me. It's, it's been really fun. Yeah, you bet. Alrighty, this has been episode number eight of the Short Round Podcast. I'm your host, Wacey Anderson, and we will catch you next time. Oh.